Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, my name is Jakob Gemasma. I'm with Changing Cities. And uh, Changing Cities is basically an uh, independent, uh, politically independent organization founded about six years ago. And we promote the urban transport revelation from below with uh, like different projects all over Germany. And today I'm going to tell you a little bit about Keats Blocks. So we started uh, Keats Blocks in summer 2020 with a small team. And from inside changing cities and basically the idea to free residential areas from motorized through traffic and residential areas are Keats in German so that's where the name comes from. So now you but you could say that that's not probably the most original idea um, because uh, low traffic neighborhoods already exist, uh, for example, in the Netherlands and Vienna or of course the superblocks in Barcelona and even in Berlin, we do have some small low traffic neighborhood uh, neighborhoods, but it's not citywide. So the question here was, how do we create a citywide movement? And the answer was uh, rather simple. Uh, we can't do it on our own because every kids, uh, every neighborhood is unique. And so the movement needs to come from those uh, neighborhoods themselves. But luckily, there are a lot of uh, local initiatives already fighting for traffic calling coming uh, all over Berlin. And the problem here was that they are not really connected. So they basically all have to fight, fight the same fight alone. And that's where we wanted to start because we as Changing Cities uh, think that we do have the network, we have the knowledge and also the resources to uh, yeah, support and connect those uh, local initiatives. And we wanted to give them a general tool basically for action. And in Berlin, uh, there is an option for that. Uh, it's a so-called residence motion where basically you put up a request and then you collect uh, 1000 or at least 1000 uh, signatures from local residents for that request. And then the district has to decide on it. And the, the idea was if we can promote that citywide, then that, uh, yeah, that will have an impact and the politics uh, can't run away from that. So we made a lot of phone calls. Uh, we uh, wrote emails to identify those local initiatives. We set up a Twitter account, a website. We wrote guidance documents. Uh, we are holding a bi-weekly consultation hour for everyone who's interested in the idea of Keats Blocks. We organized several uh, in-person events on the streets, uh, connecting all the initiatives. And well, from our perspective, it's already a uh, success, even though there is not really a Keats block yet really implemented. But uh, we do have over 70 Keats block initiatives uh, all over Berlin uh, for the moment, not in every district, but in most. And we do have, after just one year, we have political parties calling for Keats blocks, and Keats blocks even made it into the new Berlin Coalition Agreement. But of course, uh, yeah, there's still a long way to go until uh, until Keats blocks uh, become a reality Berlin wide. But that's basically our vision. Because once you eliminate this uh, motorized through traffic, of course, you get like obvious things like better air quality, less noise or more safety on the roads. But um, yeah, if you uh, once this uh, motorized through traffic is eliminated, you get uh, a lot of uh, free space, basically. And this space can be used for a variety of things like playgrounds, delivery zones, local markets, green spaces or urban gardening or, and so much more. And yeah, from our perspective, we do need all of that because cities are already heat islands. And uh, so we need to create more spaces for cities to cool down and kids blocks in our opinion makes cities more resistant on the one hand to climate change uh, it's running one uh, two two sentences <laughs> and uh, yeah and on the other side uh, we give more space to the people so that's why we think that uh, kids blocks should be a target image for sustainable urban development thank you <laughs> thank you jacob